Okay, so while I was waiting on those plants to grow, I decided to go raid Concord and I actually found a couple of extra plant types that I could start growing. The razor grain and a tato. A little tato plant. And then I harvested a bunch of the melons, and then I planted them, and then harvested them, and then planted them. And now I've got a nice little garden going. Hopefully, hopefully it's enough. The quest updated and said it was enough, so I'm still hoping that holds true. <laughs> now I just have to find Sturges. Sturges? Now, this hey, man. place is starting to feel like home. Now that we can grow our own food, I think we can really make a go with this. Trouble is, the more we establish ourselves here, the more of a target we become. What yeah. we need is to get some defenses set up. Oh, good. Then maybe Preston will be able to relax a little bit. What kind of defenses do you need? What sort of defenses did you have in mind? Walls, sandbags, turrets, whatever you can put together. All right, man. Well, I already put together a good amount of defense, but I don't know if it's enough. And also, I was looking through my inventory after I got back from Concord and I found this nice... Hey, this nice little mask. I don't know, it just makes me seem more mysterious. Actually, let me pull my foot boy and see the status on it. Oh, it was enough. Okay. Start. Oh, well, I'll at least talk about what I have. So, um, I had set up these little tur- er, these guys previously. I just moved them around a little bit and set up fences so potential raiders can't just walk around it and get behind the turrets. That's pretty much it. Oh, Sturges! I was already done with the defenses! Where's Sturges at? Hey, man! Those defenses you needed? Hey, Sturges. Thanks for doing that. We'll all sleep better at night knowing we have some defenses set up. It's been a long road. But yeah, I think this is it. Home. Feels good. What's next? What next? Well, I guess figuring out how to get back to living instead of just surviving. Of course, you know you're welcome anytime. My door's always open to you. Windows, too. Some of the walls actually come to think of it. <laughs> I guess I better get back to it. Yeah, Take man. Take care now. Awesome. Oh, and the level up. I yeah, should be able to grab local leader. Yes. Okay, as ruler, everyone turns to you. You're able to establish supply lines between the workshop settlements. Yes. Alright. Hopefully that means that I can use some of the stuff that's stored over at the Red Rocket Station. Hey Preston. The Minuteman could use someone like you. Oh, I thought you might have something more for me to do around town. <sighs> I'll get you back, Sean. Don't know where, don't know when, and I don't know how, but we're gonna get you back. Let's. Oh! Um. Let's see, um. Yeah, strength. Um, I'm one point away from black being able to get the blacksmith on strength, so. That's one less point I have to spend when I level up. Awesome.
All right. Um, let me favor the weapon that I just made. Yeah. Number. All right. So my next project is going to be working on a house here in Sanctuary. I'm going to set up next to the garage here where all the workbenches are. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing yet, so I'll start up the recording when I'm done. See you then. Alright, and now I'm back. I have to say, this was a difficult little project. What are you doing in here, Mama Murphy? Okay, anyway, so a lot of... Like, the workshop build mode is a little bit of a pain. At least it's not raining. Most of the time, the interior walls don't like snapping, especially if you're trying to build next to stairs. And when it comes to, you know, trying to get something to sit nicely up against a wall... I, I know, that's like the fourth time... Okay, how about I just talk to you about it? My energy? What do you mean? Thought I told you before, kid. I saw you leave that icebox. I know your pain. This world, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. But here you are. The site can help you, kid. It always ha- Maybe. Let me think it over. Well, ain't like I'm going anywhere. The site will be here when you need it. Alright, thank you. Well... Okay. Anyway, sorry about that. But uh, onward with my tour. I set up a little living room area with a couple of seats and a TV. A dining area with a little hutch and some chairs. A table. Over here in the corner, I set up a magazine rack for all the magazines that I'm going to be picking up. Plus a bobblehead station for me to display the bobbleheads that I've collected. And a cabinet for miscellaneous items that I just don't want to carry around in my inventory. And upstairs, you know, again, difficulty placing walls. The interior walls, that is. I mean, once you get one place down, you can snap to it. But it's still a pain to get it to go down and look nice. But anyways, I have a bed. A little end table there. And a balcony, so I can look out over the town. Oh, and by the way, there's no sort of half walls to put here on the end. I actually had to get a railing and get it up as close as I could, so it didn't look tacky. Anyways, on to the roof. I'm pretty sure you've heard them by now, but these little guys. I've got one on each corner. They increase the town's defense. Actually, these guys aren't in the corner. Get you all the way out. Putting these guys up high means they can't get meleeed. It's harder for them to get shot at. And yeah, I mean, they increase the town's defense. I haven't experienced any raiders yet, so hopefully I don't have to anytime soon. Anyway, so I'm going to come over to this empty foundation over here on the other side, and I'm going to show you kind of what I've learned throughout the trials and pain of building that monstrosity. And it's a monstrosity, it does not look good. Okay, so the few floor types that you're really going to be concerned with are the regular floor types. So the shack floor. The shack foundation allows you to build on uneven terrain. Also the stilted thatch or shack foundation. And then the shack upper floor. And the shack stairwell. Those are the main ones that you want to be dealing with. Um, if I were to you know, want to extend out this house, I would you know, have the shack 
foundation, you know, snap up against, you know, whatever I have on the pre-existing foundation. So anyways, I'm going to get started with placing one bit here in the middle. And then you can just snap right to that first piece. Quick, painless, easy, whatever you want to call it. Until you fall off the foundation and screw everything up. <laughs> Alright. So it's a 3x3. Three three. I'm going to go a little bit larger. Also, don't get in a rush because it does weird things. Instead of snapping, it'll do whatever it wants to. There we go. Alright. So for walls, the main types you want to concern yourself with there's always the door and then for interior walls well let's start with exterior rather and they go that's the interior and those are broken um just no I think it is this one on the end Yeah, it's that one. I just realized I didn't leave a space on the floor for a stairwell. I'll get to that in a second, though. But yeah, you can see what I mean with the issues about it not wanting to snap all the time. It's great until you try to get it. It might be this edge is kind of in the way. It doesn't look like it is, but the building sure thinks it is. Alright, now come on. Okay, so we're just going to have a have a different wall there. Because none of the big walls want to snap. That's alright. Okay, so this is one of the walls that's supposed to snap on the inside. As you can see, it doesn't want to snap anywhere. And even if I change it to a different one, it doesn't snap, period. So what you can do is, let's say I want to have something back in this corner. Oh, use the mouse buttons. You can rotate the wall back and forth. And scroll wheel brings it closer and pushes it away. So let's see. Yeah, I want to get up against here. As close as I can get. That looks straight. Alright. So now it'll snap. I believe it should snap at 90 degrees as well. Or not. They just snap straight. Okay, so I'll work with it. Actually, let me put the stairwell down first. I also storing things instead of just completely breaking them helps wonders in saving materials. Okay, now don't want it that way. Come on, there we go. Now second floor. Okay, and there are building limitations when it comes to height. You can build upwards of, I believe it's four levels. Let's 
let's see, orange. You can build one, two, three stairways. Yeah, and that's the fourth level. So yeah, you can build three stairways. When you build the fourth one, you can go up to the top of it, but you can't build anything on that layer. So just a you know, little tip on that. Alright, and now let me get back to my wall. Straight enough. Yeah, that should do. But yeah, and you just kind of do that over and over until you get your whatever you want built built. And that's the easy way. I mean, people have done some crazy stuff already with the workshop build mode, you know, creating cities that even rival Diamond City, which we haven't visited yet. We'll get there, though, eventually. But yeah, I would recommend, you know, building up however you want to. Don't use the roofing. Unless you're building something small like a 2x2 two two room or something to that effect. Just because it doesn't look good. It has holes in it. It's battered. It's torn. It's ever so slightly slanted and there's no actual flat ones to kind of go up against that or there's nothing taller there's no way you can you know stagger and have a nice slanted roof it just doesn't work that way I mean in some situations it does look good if you use it but for the most part if you're building a tower like tower like structure or you know building up several levels it's still more beneficial to have the second floor roof instead of actual roofing just because it's more convenient to have a flat space to build with on the top you know you can put turrets you can you know, put a generator up on the top you can do a lot more than what you can do with the aesthetically maybe pleasing roofing that's provided in the game alright so next up I need to add power to the settlement. Okay, so power. the generators don't require fuel. Oh man, I'm missing a gear. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut for a bit and try to find a gear. I'll be right back. All right, I found gears and I think I've got enough of them for now. You hold V, you quickly open up the workshop mode. Okay, so... Small generator. Oh, also while I was out raiding Concord, I went into sort of a um, sewer system that was under the town, and I found mute fruit. I'll explain in a little bit why that is so important. So, the small generator... Um, I'm going to set it down here. Okay, and why the generator is so important for us now is because of the recruitment bit. Really, I need crystal for it. Okay, so once you get the recruitment radio beacon, you can start getting new settlers into your town. Um, I'm going to set that up later once I find crystal. Okay, and so for the next bit something that's pretty necessary especially for sanctuary is putting down a water purifier pump let me see you, you have to be in eh, fairly deep water maybe about ankle deep water and there has to be enough of it around so this one I would love to go with the industrial sized one but I don't have a the science one perk yet so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop down one of the smaller ones and now I need a generator to power it
And this one is so important because any excess water it purifies will get put into your workshop inventory. You can take that, you can sell it. It's pretty much the easiest way to make caps early on in the game. Alright, now spacebar, just start attaching the wire. Now it's online and it's going to be producing the purified water for me. Okay, and since I already have the generator over here built, I'll show you how to start connecting electrical items up to it. So, for that... Let's see, do I have anything in here to be powered? Doesn't look like it. Hey, um, can you... Okay, fine. You can stay here for now. Now let me throw down a television. Do I that might be under patience? Okay, ne never mind, I'll just start off with lighting. Okay, so with lighting, you'll notice that there's no number beside the little power symbol. That means that the power just has to be available to it. Okay, so in this nice little shack that we made, I'm going to throw down a couple of these little light bulbs. So one there, and one over here, and we'll throw one here. Let's see. So you'll use a power pylon to bring the power from wherever it's at, or you can use a switched power pylon. You know, if there's anything that actually requires more than one power on the other end of it, and you want to shut it all off at once, you use one of these and you just flip the switch, it turns everything off. Same with just the regular switch. They're also useful for activating traps and, you know, other things like that, but I'm going to stay basic for now, just use a regular power pylon. Okay, and from there, you want power conduits. They supply power in a limited range, you know, around the conduit, so... Let me inside. I'm not sure if I can actually lead power through these little holes in the wall. Now's a good time to find out though. Okay, so the red wire means that it can't be placed. If it turns black, that means that you can place it. So let's see. I don't think that it's gonna work. So we're gonna no. Oops. Exit out of workshop mode. I'm gonna scoot it over and try again. Okay. You see how it snapped to it and it's still red? That's not gonna work. Okay, so... Cancel power. So instead, I'm just gonna move it to the outside and bring the power to the roof of this little shack. And you can already see that some of the lights in the house have already turned on. 
but some of the others haven't yet. That's just because they're not in range of the power conduit. So I just need to put probably one here on the center of the roof. No, no, don't exit out of build mode. Tab out of that. Hmm. Okay, I don't think that I'm going to be able to make it across the roof. Okay, that just means I need more power conduits to transfer the power, or another power pylon. Let's see, I think the conduits are cheaper than the pylons. Two, two, two. Well, they're cheaper on the steel, but the copper's the same. But I know that they'll give me a little bit better range. Okay, so it's a little bit out of range. And there we go. Now all the rest of the lights should be on. Now if you were to have something, for example, like a light box. Each light box requires one power. They're really expensive to make. Um, oh yeah, good example on the turrets. So, the more advanced turrets, like the laser turrets, the shotgun turret, spotlights, they require power. And you hook power directly up to these guys from either you know, the pylons or directly to the generator. Yeah, that's going to be about it for... Oh, right, Mute Fruit. So let me see, is this... So, the reason why you want Mute Fruit over the other types of food... You see how all the melons produce, you know, half the food? Come on, Gord. Gord. Gord's half a food. Tato is half a food. Razor grains, half a food. Well, check out how it is with the mute fruit. Each mute fruit plant produces one food. This is significant because there's a limit to how many plants one settler can work. So plant that down. Alright, I want you to work on that. Come on. There we go. Now she's going to start working on that and the food should have went up by one. Alright, and I'm going to start removing a little bit of the more useless plants, like the gourds. Especially the gourds. Okay, so... Some of the best plants for you to actually keep for yourself away gourd are not gourds okay so tatos are important mute fruit are important and I don't have it yet but corn is also important those three can be used to make an, a special adhesive let's see oh no 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 cancel So under utility, there's vegetable starch. So three corn, three mute fruit, and three tatos. And one purified water makes vegetable starch. Vegetable starch makes five adhesive. So it's a renewable source of adhesive. Once I get you know, my tatos and corn up and running, well, along with the mute fruit, and start producing an excess of them, I'll have plenty of adhesive. I'll never run out of it again. 
also another little renewable source of resources is the cutting fluid. So two acid, eight bones, two purified water, and three steel makes three oh actually I can go ahead and make it cancel. Cutting fluid. Alright, you can see over here. Three oil, one steel. And I'm pretty sure the vegetable starch said the fight of adhesive on the side as well. So yeah, that's some important things to keep in mind when you're setting up your first settlement. Um, especially the adhesive, almost all of the different gun parts need adhesive, or gun mods rather, sorry, need adhesive to be made. So, yeah, the vegetable starch is going to be a lifesaver. So you don't have to go hunt down wonder glue and duct tape or try to find a merchant who sells it. Anyways, I'm going to continue on to Tin Pine Bluff, I believe it was called. Yeah, the Tin Pines Bluff. And see what sort of help they need over there. Oh, and before that, I have a level up. I wish I knew I had the level up earlier, or I would have built, um, grabbed the science one and built that water purifier. That's what it was. Instead, I'm going to grab gun nut. For now, at least. Since, if you look, I'm almost ready to level again. Anyways, onward to Ten Pines Bluff.